welcome my dear learners for this course on point element analysis in our module 3 we were discussing about analysis of beams and analysis of torsions of shafts in our previous lecture i have discussed and derived the equation for element stiffness matrix and also for shear stress for analysis of torsions of shaft and also we have done a problem on analysis of torsions of shaft in today's lecture i am going to solve a problem on stepped shaft under externally applied torque our problem number 2 states that for the composite stepped shaft as shown in the figure determine the stress in aluminium and steel shafts so this is the given composite stepped shaft if you clearly observe the given figure i can model this problem with four nodes if i use four nodes i will get three elements at node number 2 he has applied an external torque of 0.2 newtons millimeter let us solve this problem moving on to our step 1 that is finite element model i can model this problem with four nodes node number 1 is fixed so therefore theta 1 will be equal to 0 at node number 2 we have an externally applied torque p2 which is equal to 0.2 newtons millimeter at node 3 we don't have any external applied torque and also at node 4 we don't have any externally applied torque the length of element 1 between node number 1 and node number 2 is given to us which is 200 millimeters the elemental length of element 2 is given which is 100 millimeters and the elemental length of element 3 is also known it is 300 mm now at node 2 i should find theta 2 at node 3 i should find th theta 3 and at node 4 i should find theta 4 so this completes our step 1 that is finite element mod moving on to our step 2 element stiffness matrix general formula for element stiffness matrix is given by k of any element is equal to gj by l 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 if i substitute the values for element 1 for element 1 element 1 is made up of aluminium so g of aluminium is 28 gpa i am solving in millimeters so therefore it is 28 into 10 to the power of 3 mega pascals into the formula of j is already known to us which is pi d power 4 by 32 that is pi into diameter of element 1 is 50 so therefore 50 to the power of 4 divided by 32 that is the formula for polar moment of inertia which is given by pi d power 4 by 32 divided by length of the element length of element 1 is known to us which is 200 mm times 1 Minus one, minus one, one. If I solve this, I'll get the element stiffness matrix for element one as ten to the power of six, eighty-five point nine zero three minus eighty-five point nine zero three minus eighty-five point nine zero three and plus eighty-five point nine zero three. Moving on for element two, I'll get the element stiffness matrix of element two as element two is also made up of aluminium. So for aluminium, G value is known, which is twenty-eight into ten to the power of three mega pascals into polar moment of inertia is pi d power four by thirty-two, which I'll get as pi into fifty to the power of four divided by thirty-two. Into length of element two is hundred millimeters. One minus one minus one one. If I solve this, I'll get the element stiffness matrix of element two as ten to the power of six one seventy one point eight zero six minus one seventy one point eight zero six minus 171.806 plus 171.806. The 
This completes the element simpleness matrix of element 2. Moving on for element 3, we have for element 3 in this equation, we have G for steel as 87 GPA. In terms of MPA, you will get 87 into 10 to the power of 3 into polar moment of inertia is pi. Diameter is known to us 25 to the power of 4 divided by 32 into length of the element 3 is 300 millimeters. If I simplify this, I will get 10 to the power of 6 into 11.121 minus 11.121 minus 11.121 and plus 11.12 This completes the step 2 where in which we have calculated the element stiffness matrix of element 1, element 2 and element 3. Moving on to our step 3 to find the global stiffness matrix. The order of the global stiffness matrix is N cross L for torsions of shaft because in terms of shaft, we are using one dimensional formulation and each node has only one degrees of freedom that is twist. As the problem contains four nodes, the order of the global stiffness matrix is 4 cross 4. The procedure to obtain the global stiffness matrix is same as the procedure what we have followed for analysis of one dimensional bar elements that is K11 of element 2 must be added to the K22 of element 1. Then K11 of element 3 must be added to the K22 of element 2 and so on. So if I do that, I will get the global stiffness matrix for the given problem as K is equal to 10 to the power of 6. Entering the values of element 1, we have 85.5. 903 minus 85.903 now I should add k11 of element 2 to the k22 of element 1 if I do that I will get plus 171.806 minus 171.806 minus 171.806 plus 171.806 6. Now, I should add K11 of element 3 to K22 of element 2. If I do that, I will get plus 11.121 minus 11.121 minus 11.121 plus 11.121. Fill the unfilled positions with zeros. Further simplifying which, I will get the global stiffness matrix K as 10 to the power of 6 85.903 minus 85.903 This completes the global stiffness matrix for the given problem. Moving on to our step 4 that is global load vector we have if you clearly observe at node 1 we don't have any torque so therefore global load vector F is equal to 0 at node 1, at node 2 we have a torque of 0.2 Newton millimeters, at node 3 we don't have any torque, at node 4 also we don't have any torque. This completes the global load vector for the given problem. Moving on to our step 5 that is equilibrium equation and application of boundary condition. Coming for step 5 equilibrium equation application of boundary condition, we have the equation as k into q is equal to f where k is the global stiffness matrix. The values of global stiffness matrix are noted down from step 3 and the summing points we have 257.709 and 182.927. After obtaining the k matrix multiplied with q matrix, q matrix contains the nodal variables to be calculated and the nodal variables are theta 1 at node 1, theta 2 at node 2, theta 3 at node 3 and theta 4 at node 4 which is equal to F, F is the global load vector, substituting which we have 0, 0 0.2 Newton millimeters, 0 and 0. The boundary condition for this problem is node 1 is fixed, 
So therefore, the boundary condition is theta one is equal to zero. Eliminate corresponding row and column for theta one. Eliminating first column and first row. Note down the remaining matrix and solve to calculate the value of theta two, theta three, and theta four. If I do that, I get we have ten to the power of six times two fifty seven point seven zero nine minus one seventy one point eight zero six zero minus one seventy one point Eight zero six one eighty two point nine two seven minus eleven point one two one zero minus eleven point one two one plus eleven point one two one multiplied by theta two theta three theta four which is equal to zero point two zero And zero. If I solve this matrix with equations with three unknowns, I'm going to get theta two is equal to two point three two eight two into ten to the power of minus nine radians. And the value of theta three is also same, which is two point. Three two eight two and ten to the power of minus nine radians. The value of theta four is also same, which is equal to two point three two eight two and ten to the power of minus nine radians. This completes the nodal variables required to calculate it for the given problem. Now moving on to find the elemental shear stresses. We have formula for elemental shear stress. Now is given by G R by L theta final load minus theta initial load. If I calculate for element one, tau one is equal to element one is made up of aluminium. For aluminium, the value of G is twenty eight into ten to the power of three. The radius is 25 millimeters and length of element one is 200 millimeters. Theta final node, final node for element one is two, so therefore theta two is known to us, which is 2.32 a2 into 10 to the power of minus nine radians minus initial node for element one is node one. The twist is zero at node one. So if I calculate, the will be equal to. Eight point one four eight seven into ten to the power of minus six megapascals or newton per millimeter square. That is nothing but eight point one four eight seven pascals. That is newton per meter square. Moving on to element two and element three. If you clearly observe. For element two, the nodes are three and two. So therefore, theta three minus theta two will give us zero because theta two is equal to theta three. So therefore, shear stress of element two is equal to zero. This is because of the reason the twist at node two and node three are same. Coming for element three, the nodes are three and four. Since theta three is equal to theta four, the shear stress of element three. Is also equal to zero for the given problem. These are the twists at various nodes. Theta one is given to us, which is equal to zero, and this is the elemental stress of element one. Whereas for element two and three, the stresses are zero and zero. Element two and element three will experience the shear stress if I apply the external torque on node number three and node number four. Since node number three and node number Four are free without experiencing any externally applied torque. We are getting the elemental shear stress for element two and for element three as zero. This completes the given problem. That's all from this lecture. Thank you.